Did it finally happen, Toby? Toby, you gonna say hi? What's up, Toby? Won't even look at me, huh? Yeah, I know. Sleepy Toby. Toby, come here, Paul. Yeah, show some love. Good boy, Toby. <laughs> He's tired. And so is he. Oh, he woke up. Well, Turbo was out cold, so I thought this would be a good time to pick up the camera. He'll probably fall back asleep. You gonna fall back asleep? You can go sleep, Turbo. Nice, soothing voice. There we go. I was gonna say, this one. Oh, all morning. Been bouncing all over the place. I figure at some point, you'd think he would go to sleep. And there we go. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. It's a Absolutely beautiful day, off and on overcast, which is kind of annoying, at least for filming videos. But it's nice and cool out. Okay, you gonna go lay down over there? There you go. Good boy, Turbo. After the last garden tour, I got a lot of questions about these pool planters here, which I did plant these up in a vlog probably back in May or June. I'm not positive when it was, but the questions were just more about people wanting more details about what are in the containers. I thought it would be a good idea to just do a video on them. Probably gonna be pretty short. Just go over what's in the containers, everything that's down below and up high. Talk about what I would do differently and what I have to do to take care of them. I put a lot of plants in these containers. So to start things off, the containers themselves, I believe these are 34 or 36 inches high by 24 inches wide. Is that right? I haven't actually measured them. Nope, I was wrong. More like 32 inches by 24 inches across. Either way, big pots. And the diameter across is a little bit wonky because these are ceramic. They've been out in the sun for a few years, so they're more kind of oblong and circular around the top. That's really not that important. And then, okay, the sun came out. I'll wait for this cloud to move over and come right back. Okay, real quick, before that cloud goes away, I'm gonna go through what's in these containers. In each one of these pots, there are two Colocasia Maui Golds. They have a beautiful lighter green leaf on them. It has a nice shine to it. There's a lot of texture and variation in the shades of greens and the yellows that are in them. They get, I believe, 36 to 40 inches high and wide. They'll go wider than that. They multiply like crazy. And then there are two of these Heliconia Sideracorum Chocanianas. Not the most colorful of heliconias, but they are really reliable growers and flowers and one of the easier ones to get a hold of. So there's one of those on each side, then an elephant ear in the front and an elephant ear in the back. In the very center is Heliconia hirsuta costa flores, which has a bract on it. I just had it. Where'd it go? I'll put it up here on the screen. They have a much more colorful flower that comes up higher than these do right here and they have a greenish to yellow start that finishes off in red. The hirsutas tend to get taller than the chocanianas do and they have more of a reed-like appearance to them or growth habit I should say. So those will come up four and a half to five feet tall out of the middle and have flower heads that stand up above everything else. They're in between blooms right now so they had shorter foliage that bloomed out and now they're just now starting to put out their longer foliage is going to come up even higher and have those flowers on them. And then there are also a couple of Baju bananas in here as well. That was an afterthought to everything. So were the two Heliconia Chocanianas on each side. It was just because I had some bananas growing up out of my drainage ditch that needed to be moved. So I went and just stuck the pups in here, figured, hey, maybe those will overwinter in here. We'll talk more about the flaw and the logic there in a minute. Down below, oh no, there's still one more up high. Almost forgot about the Cordelin Frodocasa kiwis. Aren't they pretty? They're so pretty. They have that beautiful rainbowy variegation. The new growth comes out with that pinkish tinge to it, and then they hold on to some of that in their older foliage. Okay, down below, which you can't even see because I need to prune up these elephant ears. There are two Supertunia Vista fuchsias, which have a reddish pink color to them. Two Supertunia Vista Silverberries, which are white, with that pinkish veining that goes down into the eye. And then the purple is Supertunia Bordeaux. Oh, and there are two Supertunia Honeys in each one, but they're they're a pathetic petunia, and you can't even see them. Not at all. Just see Silverberries and Fuchsias. And I will say, I'm not actually crazy about this color combination down here. I tried the Paradise last year, the Supertunia Vista Paradise, and decided I wasn't nuts about them because they were more red than pink. Turns out the fuchsia, well, it's fuchsia. <laughs> so, sh so should have seen that coming. Pretty much looks like the paradise to me. 
So next year I will probably do the Vista Bubblegum or if I can get a hold of them, the Vista Jazzberry, which are just beautiful. I hope I can find some of those. Back to the bananas. So when I popped those in there, the only reason I was on the fence about putting them in there was, well, there were two reasons. One, these containers are already very, very, very full. And then put on top of that, they're nutrient hogs. The bananas are nutrient hogs. The elf are nutrient hogs. The heliconias are nutrient hogs and so are the petunias, particularly the Vista petunias. Since there's so many plants in these containers, I knew I was going to have to fertilize them a lot, which I do. When I planted them up, I made sure that the planting mix was really rich in organics. There's compost and earthworm castings in there, which was great for about, I'd say a month with everything. But since then, I've been fertilizing once a week with an all-purpose fertilizer that also contains chelated iron. That's important, particularly for the heliconias. They yellow up very, very easily. And I've noticed that the Maui Golds, they tend to do the same as well. And the bananas and the petunias both like a lot of potassium in their fertilizers. So I do also once a week give them a fertilizer that's actually made for petunias to make sure that those petunias are getting what they need to keep going, as well as the banana. The other thing with the bananas, I was thinking, okay, well, I'll pop that in there and that could potentially overwinter outside. Everything else is going to have to be removed for the winter time. The heliconias will go inside, the elephant ears probably will also go inside dormant, and then the petunias, well, their annuals, they'll just get tossed. The banana, potentially, if it's a mild enough winter, will come back, but there's so much in these containers. What do you think the odds are that I'm gonna be able to get all those other things out without having to also pull that banana out? It seems pretty slim, right? Uh, whatever, I didn't have anything else I could do with the bananas and I had to dig them up, so there they are. They're not really a part of these containers as far as I'm concerned, at least not this year. They're not going to do too terribly much. The elephant ears are the stars of the show. Sorry about the lighting. The sun, I just tried to hold my hand over the lens as if that was going to help anything. And when I planted these up in that vlog, I'm pretty sure that I said, I knew I was really putting too much in these containers, but I didn't care. Like I'll just keep fertilizing them and I have, it's not a big deal. Everything else I just try and keep amended with nice, good, rich stuff. The earthworm castings and compost and uh, like some of the stuff from the Spoma and Jobes. Those have worked pretty well. So fertilizing, it's just once a week. The Colocaceas have a pretty wide spread on them and they always are putting out new shoots from down below. So I come in here and I try and prune this lower stuff off fairly often, probably every other week. But as they put out new growths, like you can see there's a little one right in here, that little one, every single time I do that, there's just more leaves coming over the front. And I love a vigorous elephant ear. Who doesn't, right? Most of them are pretty vigorous. But that has posed some problems with making sure that the light can get through to those petunias. So if I were to do this again, or for the people who want to do something similar, I would suggest maybe just doing one elephant ear in the middle, then picking out the petunias that you like and going around the edge with those and uh, maybe skipping on the heliconias, bananas, and the cordolins, only because they really are buried in there. The Chocaniana heliconias, these orange ones right here, were also an afterthought. I just stumbled upon them this year and bought basically every single one that the nursery had because heliconias are pretty hard to come by this far north, and I wanted to be able to see some of them. Had I had those heliconias before I had the elephant ears, I probably would just have those as my centerpiece, even though I love the Maui Gold Colocasias. They get pretty big. So I think that these would be better in a massive container, even though these are pretty big. Well, a container that's larger than this would be better or in the landscape would be ideal. Don't get me wrong, I love them. And I think that they're beautiful, but there's just, there's a lot going on here. And I'm flattered that so many people were talking about how much they love them, but there's still, there's all those things that I would change about them. As I was just saying, there's still plenty that I would do differently. Mostly I just wouldn't pack them quite so tight. I only did two elephant ears because I wanted to make sure that as you're coming through on this end of the patio that basically the pot looks the same on each side. And then from the sides with the Cordelin Frotocasas, which are buried in this pot by the Heliconias. You can kind of see one right there. There's one hiding out right down there in between the Heliconias and the elephant ears. But still it's such a lovely plant and like you can barely see it. Now from in the pool, the view is absolutely stunning, which is something that I was trying to take into consideration when I put these together, was that you know, I couldn't swim last year because of all the surgeries and you know, cancer stuff. So I wanted to make sure that the view from the water would just be glorious, and it is. Looking up on these, these are absolutely beautiful, but they're more high maintenance than what I would normally do in this spot. Look at all these. There's so many leaves that need to be pulled. And most of what I do isn't that high maintenance, so 
it's not the end of the world. I really don't mind doing it. But as far as maintaining the beauty, you, you gotta go through it and prune. And actually, I'm probably gonna grab my clippers right now and go and prune out all this lower foliage. That way you can have a better look at what these look like after they've been maintained some. I kind of let them go over the last few weeks with the puppy being here and everything. So I need to grab my pruners and thin these out, thin the lower portion out. So you can see right here, hopefully it's so sunny, I can't even see my viewfinder. There's a lot of growth here that's just hanging over the edge, which I do think looks pretty, but it's not conducive to the petunias being able to get the light that they need and also want to make sure that there's enough air flowing around all the plants. And there we go. That opens things up quite nicely and you still get the beauty of the elephant ears up above everything, but some more light, particularly in the morning, we'll be able to come through here and keep those petunias going. They've been shaded, like I said, for a few weeks. I'm sure y'all know how it is. Sometimes life gets busy and you forget to do certain things like prune up your elephant ears so that your petunias can get some sunlight. All right, that's much better. That opened things up nicely. More sun's going to be able to get in there and get the petunias going. You can tell just from looking at the pots, wherever the elephant ears are, there's not as much growth going on down below with the petunias. And I think it just makes them look more tidy. Another way to get around something like this would be to use an alocasia, which has more of an upright growth habit to it. So that's going to leave a lot more space in the center for everything. But have to be mindful of sunlight. Sometimes alocasias, depending on the type, can be more sensitive to sun. The more common types, it really shouldn't be an issue. Those would just grow up straight out of the middle and they'll hold their leaves more up. I have one, let me show you. Stand around, try and describe it when I have them right here in the garden. There, so this is a pretty typical alocasia. What you would see with their growth, how these leaves stick up into the air instead of hang down like you see on the colocasias. So that would allow a lot more planting space around the base of the plant and more light to get in for the petunias or whatever annuals are being used. So I have this one last plant here to get pruned out. And then that's going to do it. I'm sure I'm gonna have some comments in the video saying you overplanted them. I said that multiple times. I am aware, usually with annuals, you can get away with having a lot more of them in your containers as long as stay on top of the fertilizing. Oh yeah, that opened things up nicely. It's not looking quite as messy down there as it was before. And that's a lot. These are very vigorous plants. Elephant ears, you know, they just grow like crazy. So this is from, I think I said what, it's been three weeks since I've done my pruning and I was trying to do it every two weeks. So that's all just from two plants right there. Overall, I do like them. Just wanted to make it clear that I don't think I would recommend putting this many in one container. I was just really feeling it and went with the flow of what I wanted to do. And now I'm fertilizing once a week, I guess twice a week if you consider them using one fertilizer specifically for petunias and then an all purpose fertilizer for everything else. All right, that's going to do it though. There's everything that's in the containers, you know, their size and what I've been doing to maintain them or haven't been doing, but should be doing to maintain them. Yeah, look at that. That looks so much better. Though I did appreciate that rounded form that it had. This opens it up and now can see better why I was saying that I think just one in the middle would have been fantastic. Didn't need all that other stuff in the mix. I'm a heliconia nut though. So since I found them, I had to put them in here. I wanted them front and center, even though they're really more of an accent in a pot like this because there's so many other plants. I love them. They look so pretty. And these are, they still have a couple months of flowering left to go on them. So it should just get even more vibrant with those fun spikes of orange flowers. And the hirsutas come up, we'll have that reddish flower coming out and the hummingbirds love them too. So no regrets other than the Supertunia Vista fuchsias. They almost look identical to the paradise to me. So next year, I'm just gonna go with the bubble gums or the jazzberries. Heck, even something like this, this kind of green would look beautiful with just one color underneath it. Just the Vista bubble gums which are all of much lighter pink, petunia, or well, anything. I think anything would pair nicely with this shiny light green color over there. Okay, I know I said that this is gonna be a shorter video and it probably wasn't, because that's just not how things work for me. But I made sure to give off what was in here, the size of the pots and the maintenance stuff fairly soon into the video and the rest of it's just been getting things cleaned up and tidy. I do expect to see more from the petunias here as they're getting more light. Also, one thing I noticed, it's really neither here nor there, but just talking about the Vista Fuchsia, in comparison to some of the other vistas, it has a much wider spread before it seems to trail. So I'm wondering if it might be more of a mounted petunia versus one that just hangs down with a lot of vigor. Like with the silverberry right here, you can see that got planted into this boom, right down the side of the pot. Same thing with the Bordeaux, but all the fuchsias that I planted, those are all more creeping along the tops. 
before they're coming down. I mean, heck, they're barely even coming down at all. I don't know, just thought that's something I'd point out if you were trying to replicate this and you want something that's going to come over the edge of the pot. I do, I want something that's gonna come over the edge of the pot. So another reason that I probably won't use the fuchsias in these containers next year. All right, that's gonna do it. Comment down below, say hi, I love talking to everybody. Tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. What are some of your favorite planters and plant combinations you've been doing this year? All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Oh, hey, see? So this is the side that I hadn't done yet. How this petunia is gonna get any light with those things hanging over. I'm gonna prune that as soon as we're done here. Bye, bye.